we're starting with the first sequence that shows the smoke. This is one of the TV cameras. You'll see the smoke. Coming right there. We're going to show some more isolated views in a second so you can see it a little bit clearer, but that's the first time. Now this is uh, engineering camera 60. Now you can see it coming right there. We say multiple puffs, you can actually see it kind of billowing out as it goes. And you're going to see that clear in just a second. Okay, this will be a little bit clearer because of the, the background here. See the black smoke going right there? There you go. Then it disappears at that 3.3 .3 seconds and we don't want to see it anymore. This is a combination view. Here and here. Now this is a data camera that's kind of looking to the side. You can see it. So we said it moved initially in the plus X direction, meaning it was moving like so. And this is the attach point that goes around the SRB to the 2058 ring frame. The joint itself is right above there, right about in there. Now this is later on in the flight where we first see the plume development and we're going to show you several views here. You can start seeing a little bit of the flickering that goes, see right there? And we'll go back and isolate this and you can see it. That's several frames here to give you a perspective of it. You can't see much from the camera because we purposely darken the background so it would highlight the uh, flame when it appears and that'll, that'll show up in a second. There you go, that's the 58 second point I was talking about. So essentially what happened, you had the smoke, and it tended to heal itself a little bit, and then later on it started developing. Once that flickering starts, then it gets progressively larger as it goes. You can see isolated on this shot over here. As the plane gets larger, or the plume gets larger, the aerodynamic effect makes it tend to move to the rear. And as it's large enough, whether, you know, which, what that means is the hole is get, just getting larger as it grows, then the whole thing is constant. And after that occurs, and the flame is impinging upon the LH2 tank is what caused the leak to develop.
you can see it's just getting progressively worse. At that point, the yaw rates here is what helped us to understand that right-hand SRB was starting to move. Now this is a computer aided design picture here, and what we've done is accentuated the motion and re-rock it back and forth. Actually, it did not rock back and forth, but that's just to let you get an idea is that motion I was talking about earlier on the model occurred here. And then once it started to move away is when it collapsed into the inner tank area forward. Now you'll be able to see the LH2 tank failure because of the flame will start to look different here. There you go, right there. When you just, just change that color there, that was when the, the tank failure occurred. This first hint of vapor at the inner tank area is an indication that that LOX tank on top was leaking after the SRB moved into it. That's right. These are taken from 70 millimeter frames and they're clear on a light table. When you make it into a TV like this, you lose a lot of the clarity. Now you're gonna see a flash right in here. Do the aerodynamics when this hydrogen is leaking here and the LOX is leaking here, the hydrogen actually tends to move up the side of the vehicle. And when it did, it combined, and then you, from the heating, you got the flash there. This is what I meant by us using stop action when we made this to help you to see it. This intense white flash is when we believe the total structural breakup occurred. The greatly increased intensity of the white flash that was just the way we, we indicated that was when structural breakup occurred because it appeared to be the large explosion occurred here. Oh, the vehicle came apart. Okay, the SRBs and the, and the uh, orbiter and the ET just all came apart. We call it structural breakup rather than a real explosion because uh, a lot of people are arguing whether or not it was really technically an explosion, but we know it was structural breakup. Now what this series of frames does is just go back and repeats what you've just seen. You're going to see the uh, shoot here in a second in the nose cap, the right hand SRB. There's a nose cap going, it'll, it'll stop here in a second. There's the shoot, and there's the nose cap there. Then you're going to see range safety destruct to the right hand SRB, and then of the left in a second. Here's the left.
Now you're going to see a frame of them side by side a little further distance away. Here and here. It was going out of the limits that the range safety officer had, so he went on and, and destructed. Turns out it really helped because if those things had burned to completion, they'd probably been out in such deep water, it would have really been tough for, for recovery. Tell me I've had a film failure. Oh, I'm gonna have to apologize. It looks like I've had a film failure, Mr. Chairman. The Can you, uh, hey Tommy, would you stop that and just back up for a few frames because I want to get the header of this. Just push rewind and just, Mr. Chairman, stand by. We're going to have to replace some of this because I want you to see the first of this. Okay. Because of the interest in the crew cabin, we've included some footage here. You're going to see this uh, several different sequences, so we'll start with the larger picture first and then we'll zero in on what we're able to see. some pieces that were coming out here. This was the wing that was going off in that direction. We're going to zero back in in a moment, but in this second contrail, this sm second smoke trail, is where the crew module ended up going. We're going to show you some details of that. This is from camera 202. It's going to be coming right through there. I'm going to show you some more details in a second. This one right here is the uh, the one that did the tipsy doodle, which was the left, right. Now what we did was we took some TV and enhanced it on a frame by frame basis. That was not it right there. No, there was another piece. Coming up, see right there? It's gonna cross through that smoke in just a second. There it is right there, okay? We think this is remainder of the SSMEs burning on the aft compartment there. These have been uh, enlarged a little bit, yes sir. And we just, you can see a lot better on a light table when you have a 70 millimeter. And we just stood there and just studied it for a long time. There it's coming down now, here. That's the crew compartment, yes. In a moment you're going to see um, one more series that it looks like it's moving up. 
but that's just the way we did it when we put it together. It's actually not moving up, but this just gives you an idea what it looked like. And that completes the uh, film, Mr. Chairman. In fact, that completes uh, what I've got for you today. And I guess tomorrow we're going to use a, a timeline. And in the timeline, I can show you what's happening on the vehicle side.